and Joe Coburn. Well, it's the story of the week. Tune for another bout of political punch-ups. And none other than Queen guitarist Brian May will be here as he takes to the Daily Politics soapbox. I'm a person who's voted Conservative most of my life, but when I realised in the run-up to the election that David Cameron was sympathetic to and supported by a group of people in the community who abuse animals, I became very upset. Politicians. Now, to something a little different, foxes have hit the headlines again this week, this time after the attack on two baby girls as they slept in their home in East London. But what's the best way to deal with them, and should they be seen as pests? During the election, the Conservatives revisited the issue of the fox hunting ban, saying they would offer a free vote on whether to end the ban. But it's a highly contentious issue, and we asked Brian May of the rock band Queen to give us his view. I'm probably best known to most of you as a rock star, or as a musician even, but my education was primarily as a scientist, and I'm a doctor of astrophysics now. But for many years, I felt that something was terribly wrong with the way human beings treat the other species on this planet. So I'm now devoting a large part of my time and energies to try to stop animals of all kinds having to suffer needless pain, humiliation and death at the hands of humans. This is Pixie, one of our little orphans, an absolutely enchanting creature. See, to me, it's unthinkable. How could people want to tear these beautiful creatures apart limb from limb using packs of dogs? I'm a person who's voted Conservative most of my life, but when I realised in the run-up to the election that David Cameron was sympathetic to and supported by a group of people in the community who abuse animals, I became very upset. <laughs> and then there's badgers. See, this little chap's called Bill, and he's an orphan. And there came a point where I realised that the same bunch of people in the new Tory party were determined to cull badgers. That means kill our native badgers in the mistaken belief that it's going to control the spread of bovine TB. It's a very contentious issue. And to my mind, it's a no-brainer that this is not what we should be doing. So what happened was, becoming incensed by all this, I founded an organisation called Save Me to try to tell people what was happening. And uh, we are fighting the best way we can to try and see that these animals, in this case wild animals, but actually all animals, to try and make sure they get a good deal. Do you remember me? Yeah, I think she does actually. You know, it looks like we're petting them here, but there comes a point where they will reject humans at a certain age and we have to encourage that. So she'll be out looking after herself and we have to make sure that they can uh, feed themselves and protect themselves. So that's the idea of this soft released centre down here. But she's going to be hard to let go, aren't you? She's beautiful. And Brian May putting his case in a film we recorded last week. And Brian May is here in the studio. Welcome to The Daily Politics. Just briefly before we come to the chat to say that Diane Abbott has indeed made it onto the list, onto the ballot. She's secured enough support among Labour MPs. She must have got that 33 to be a candidate for Labour leader. And we'll come back to that in a moment. Now, just to return to the film, we saw Brian May there on his soapbox about foxes. Now, of course, this week we've had the horrible story of those two babies who were attacked by a fox while they were sleeping in their bedroom. Now, now, doesn't that, Brian, may bring home to a lot of people and to yourself that they're not always the lovable creatures that you portrayed there in that film? I'm hoping that this film brings home to people that they're not vicious, nasty creatures because the hysteria which has surrounded, you know, the reaction to these poor children being attacked it makes me feel sick to the stomach, I have to say. I mean, the only way a fox would do anything um, nasty to a, a person of any kind is if it's trapped or if it, you know, it panicked in some way. This, this I mean, it's, it's an entirely wrong reaction. Do you know how many fox attacks there have been on children in the last 20 years? Probably three, and, and a couple of them discredited. During that time, there are a thousand attacks by dogs on children. And how many attacks by people on, on children? You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a reaction way out of proportion. But do you not think that people 
do have a concern about foxes, not just in the countryside where farmers regard them as a pest, but even in the cities. They come into the gardens, they're attacking the rubbish, they're spewing it all over uh, front lawns and back lawns, and now, of course, they're getting bolder, and there is a potential... No, they're not getting bolder. This is rubbish. They're absolutely not getting bolder. All they want to do is eat, you know, and unfortunately, people are very scruffy and, and careless and leave their bins open and whatever. We encourage them into the town. Unfortunately, the fact that there's people chasing around on with red jackets in the countryside, trying to chase them out of the countryside, chases them into the town. So perhaps the hunts are responsible for more urban So foxes. you don't think there should be a colour at all of foxes? You don't think Absolutely the population needs not. to be brought down? No. The, the only reason there is a population of foxes in this country at all is because of the hunt. The hunt breed foxes. This is what people don't realise. You know, there is no question of the hunt trying to control foxes. Foxes are there because the hunt needs them to, to pursue what they call sport. Nick Herbert, do you agree with that vision of the world as far as foxes are concerned? Well, I don't agree with Brian. We've, we've, we've had these Met discussions and, 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 and talked about them, and I think we just have to have a respectful difference of view. And there are differences of views between people on this issue. Hunting's always been a very uh, emotive issue. I, at the end of the day, always think that these have to be settled by the exercise of the individual conscience. And once you get the state involved, well, then should the state be deciding lots of other ways in which we interact with animals? If you're a vegetarian, that's a matter of personal choice. But how about a bit of balance, actually? You've had Brian's film, fine. How about interviewing... Uh, next time, an upland sheep farmer and talk to him about lamb losses from foxes. How about interviewing uh, a dairy farmer and talk to him about losing uh, a large number of cattle from a dairy herd, having to be slaughtered, 40,000 cattle slaughtered every year because of bovine TB. Let's have a bit of balance about this. I and can answer all of that. Yes, go on. <laughs> Yeah, but I think we'd like to hear from the people yes, affected. But, 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 but this I is would like balance as well because in, in the Save Me Foundation, which we've started, you know, I have so many farmers who agree with our point of view and who hate the hunt, trampling all over their property. But what uh, about dealing with the foxes? Their, their... I mean, there are two dealing different issues, foxes? aren't there? Hunting foxes is, is, is one thing, um, and if you support, you know, the hunt as people do, then that's fine and they've defended their position. This is an idea about controlling the fox population and answering, and answering the question that they do attack livestock, they do eat chickens, they, or at it's least they kill very, them. very, very, very very, very rare, you know, and, and foxes on the whole uh, cause a lot less damage to land than the hunt do, and I know that for a certain... I have so many farmers who, who would agree with me on that. Do you think that's a responsible position that Brian May is taking? No, I'm, I'm afraid this is an age-old argument, uh, and I'm afraid I just it... disagree, and I think most people Can I ask who you why live and work in the countryside would disagree, not everybody, uh, and so on, but I, do, I feel very strongly, question, actually, that... I mean, Brian and I have talked about these issues a lot, and we ended up in exactly the same position uh, <laughs> as, we, as we started with, and and it just actually reinforces my view that actually we need to be careful about laws here. And at the end of the day, I think people have to make up their own minds about this, just as they do a whole range of other things. Can I just, can I just ask... Can I ask one question? Yes, one question. Why are, there fox, why are there foxes in the Isle of Wight? There weren't any foxes in the Isle of Wight in the 1930s. They were introduced purely to be hunted. What do you say to that? Well, I, I mean, I wasn't around then, frankly, but, but the truth is that there are plenty of areas where foxes are a nuisance to people with livestock, whether it's poultry or... or but they or wouldn't where, be there if it weren't for the hunt, Nick. It, Can you deny that? No, if you they go wouldn't to an upland area, they're not just there. And, and, and you know, these you arguments... encourage them. You have places Parliament where you went round and round the houses uh, with these arguments. People will debate these arguments for, 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 for is years it, to it has come. To go, is it, no, then, is it then worth reintroducing? I mean, is it really worth revisiting all these arguments? The ban is in place. Shouldn't we leave well, it? Well, no, it isn't. I mean, Nick is right that... Parliament debated this at some length. Yes. In the end, look, this is an issue of animal cruelty when it comes to hunting with dogs. And you either think it is acceptable to set one animal on another to kill it in the name of sport, or you don't. And Parliament considered it and voted for the hunting ban. I think we should keep it in place. I notice it's in the coalition agreement that there will be a free vote. Yes. I should be very surprised to see this coming forward soon because, frankly, the public supports the hunting ban, including in rural areas, because um, Brian is absolutely right. This is something that a majority of people in town true. and country well, oppose. Polls just, mm. People just don't want this. Why would the coalition government devote any time to it? And certainly not in the near future when they're looking at much bigger issues like cuts. Well, we had a commitment to allow Parliament a free vote. Uh, and but that you've is had part quite a of lot the, of commitments, but that is, yeah, and that's, But that's part of the co coalition agreement. I think it's perfectly reasonable to say to a new parliament that you can uh, have a vote on a motion and decide what you want to do about it. Clearly, there are other major priorities now in relation to dealing with the uh, def so. deficit and so on. There's a division of opinion about, about yes. this. We have to respect that, although I don't think actually there was ever a majority for an outright ban on hunting, and I think you have to look at the ban and say, has it really been uh, effective and the best way to promote animal welfare? By all means, let's go on discussing, debating uh, these issues. There are strong feelings on either side, but don't let's pretend these are the overriding issues of the day. They're not.
I hope they don't become the overriding issue of the day. I hope you sort out your economic problems before you start bringing back this <laughs> appallingly cruel sport. How could you possibly be thinking of it? Brian May, thank you very much.